Hi, it's Chris with Implied Music, and this is sort of future me here just recording the, uh, the intro. Field recordings can be great sources of musical tones. We live in noisy environments, and sometimes those noises have really defined pitches. Well, I got my hands on a great um, field recording pack and just thought I'd have some fun with it. Let's take a look. <music> Well, this uh, industrial field recording sample pack recorded with a contact microphone behind a, uh, a building in Finland, <laughs> it's, a, it's an industrial cooling system, is just so gorgeous. It's a highly complex um, wave set. Uh, this waveform has, and you can see the spectral display of it now, each of these bright lines represents a specific uh, frequency. And you can see um, a strong fundamental here, and then a super bright overtone there, and a few other harmonics over the top. Well, one of the things that RX-7 spectral display and just this, this, uh, this program allows us to do is to um, select certain parts of the sound and just that overtone, right? It's a pure sound, it's terrific. In fact, it's a little too pure, probably. Or you can use a time selection tool that uh, allows you to grab the fundamental here. I think this is kind of the fundamental. You can barely hear it. I'm going to select this overtone as well. There we go. And I actually could probably expand it to get a little more color. If I moved it up, listen. I can actually tune the overtones. Well, that's what I've done, and I've created a new file, and you can see the strong uh, tones right there. I'm going to bring that into contact and see if I can't make a playable instrument out of it. Here we are in, in contact. I'm just going to create a new instrument and open up the guts of it. Now the first thing we want to do is, is uh, get into the mapping editor because I'm going to import that sample. I'm just going to drag that sample in. Now I listened to it a little bit ahead of time and what I believe is that it's kind of a C sharp. So I'm going to drag it down onto just C sharp. So let's play that C sharp on my keyboard. And since it's a high sample rate, um, I should be able to, to work with it. Contact gives us reference tone. I'm going to turn on a C sharp 3. And then go into the tuning and see what I think. I think it's really, really close. See what I mean? I think it's very close to a C-sharp. And if I'm honest, it probably could be a little bit louder, so I'm going to take everything up. There, I'm sort of getting somewhere now. Well, let's take a look at this in the wave editor. There's my sample. You can see it's, it's awful quiet. I think what I'd like to do is start it a little further in. So I'm going to grab this start time and just drag it in. This is a little click right there, so I want to go past that. OK, this is working for me. And then what's happening at the end? I think the end probably does the same type of thing, so I'm going to do that. And I'm going to just go ahead and, and set a loop that goes forwards and backwards until the release. And we'll probably set a little crossfade time just to make things lovely. My next step is to pull the edge of this down so that it will play across, oh, I don't know, a couple of octaves, shall we say. 
Well, right now you can tell that it uh, has a envelope that's very, very, you know, snappy. So I'm going to take the attack time up to like several hundred milliseconds. And the sustain down a bit. Hold time on the decay. I want to invert the curve. There we go. All right, I'm playing a fifth D and A. It's very pretty. It's got a lot of harmonic content. So what if I try to bring that harmonic content out a bit by adding a filter, say a peak notch filter. That's terrific. Now I want to add a simple filter that rolls off the highs a bit as I move up the keyboard. So let's add a simple low pass filter and I want to modulate that from an external source key position. I want to invert that. There we go. And perhaps a little less. And let's break it. Nice. This is all working nicely. And I just want to put a little animation on that. And there's a couple ways to do it. I mean, we could add a rotator or send it through an amplifier to give it a little juice. Um, this is the kind of thing where maybe a little saturation wouldn't hurt. We'll start with that, and then we'll put a little chorus on it. There are some great presets for the chorus. Um, let's try just a, a like a string space. Yeah. Now the last thing I like to do with an instrument like this is to go into the amplifier, which controls volume, uh, volume and pan, volume, pan. And right now, velocity is controlling volume, which is you know quite natural. But I'm going to add another modulator, an external source, again, key position. Now, when key position controls volume, it's not so great. But if it controls pan, it's very interesting. For instance, um, this low note will push it way over to the side. And a high note to the other side. So I want something in the middle. And now if I play several notes, each pitch lives in its own place in the sound field. Which is kind of like what happens when you're sitting in front of a piano, but it also just adds a nice quality. So I've added glacier keys underneath it, and we need it to be playing on channel one as well. Glacier Keys already has some atmosphere on it. And take the atmosphere intensity completely down. <laughs> 